Hey everyone, welcome back to Ben and Danielle Reviews. I'm Ben. Today I want to talk about the month of March. So the month of March was pretty eventful in terms of games being played and it was a lot of stress, a lot of things going on at the shop, outside the shop, all that. I did get some content filmed. I did put out some content in month, the month of March. We had uh, Andrew and Jamie did the first 10 of their top 50. So look for more of that coming up. Today I just want to talk about all the games I played in March. So February was a really slow month, but I doubled the amount of plays. In March I played 50 total plays of 39 unique games. I also got 10 new games played. So I want to talk about those 10 new games and kind of just a brief overview what I thought of them. So starting out with the first one was Pixies. Pixies was a small card game I played on BGA. It was by Bombix. So it, it, there are cards numbered one through nine and you're gonna make a one through nine grid with these Pixie cards. They're Pixies of different colors and some of them are gonna be worth positive points. Some are gonna be worth negative points. And you also want to try and get do more than one of the same number because at that point, if you get more than one, you get to put one underneath uh, the other one face down, and that's gonna be worth a certain number of points based on what number, or what spot it is in, in that one through nine grid. You're also wanting to have the largest group of the same color pixies touching each other. Thought this was a pretty cool concept. I can't wait for it to come to retail eventually later this year. I ho hope it's this year. But yeah, I definitely want to pick it up and try the physical copy. I only played it so far with two players. I think that might be the best way to play it, but I'd have to try with higher player counts just to see. But I enjoyed the kind of back and forth uh, a drafting of uh, Pixies. And all right, the second one was Star Wars Unlimited, which is the new Star Wars trading card game, which was uh, fun. It's uh, I think it's pretty similar to Lorcana. So you have your uh, uh, cards you can use as resources. And so just like with Lorcana, you have cards that you put from your hand face down as ink. In this game, you use uh, the same thing, except for any card can be used as a resource card. And I like the concept of being able to take the initiative if you're done taking actions. And I like the idea of you do an action, I do an action, you do an action, I do an action, and so it keeps the game moving pretty quickly, whereas in other trading card games, it you're waiting around a long time for your turn to come. So I thought that was pretty cool. I also like the idea that they had, kind of like with uh, Force of Will, where you get to, you have your, your character, which can also, once you get to a certain point, you can uh, flip it over and make it into another creature of yourself. Uh, which is called a unit in this game. I thought that was a cool concept. I don't think I'm going to invest money into the game just because uh, so many card games and so many board games. There's, I have so many board games I have to play still. But yeah, so that's uh, Star Wars Unlimited was a, a card game I enjoyed. It was very, in terms of my favorite card games, I'll talk more about that later. But I enjoyed it a lot because I definitely want to make a video of my top 10 like favorite trading card games I've ever played. But Star Wars Unlimited was definitely a good one that I enjoyed. I do have a problem with it, the fact that you can't get product. And we've had a lot of people coming into the shop looking for Star Wars Unlimited. And when they come in, they usually buy a lot of it when they find out we had it. We finally sold out of it this weekend. And unfortunately, we can't restock. So it's hard for me to host events for that when we don't have anyone uh, coming in consistently to play and we can't get product in. So next one I played for the first time, I actually played over Easter in that uh, with my uh, a gamer friend, Andrew, who used, he did the top 50 on the channel. Uh, Brass Birmingham is a... I guess that's like a resource management game in which you are building up different types of buildings which will produce beer, iron, coal, uh, 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 and coal. And you are trying to build out rails and you are trying to uh, get uh, your resources from one building to another to produce more buildings, get points. 
very heavy game, at least for me. I tend to stay on the lighter side of games, but this one was a heavier one that I gave a try, and I really enjoyed it. I just, I thought there was a few things that were hard to understand the first time around, like the whole thing of coal, like what, how you can resource coal, how you, ha how you have to have a line tracing back to a coal source, whereas with iron, you can kind of just take it from anywhere and beer has to be like within your own personal network or something or other. I, I don't exactly remember the, the whole gist of that part, but I, so it's something that I'm going to have to, if I try and play it again, I'll have to like relearn the game. And so that's always annoying because it always takes so long with those heavier games to learn how to play them. But I enjoyed the game and it's one I would definitely try again if I had the time. Uh, it did run a little long for as do most of those games and we only played a two player. So I don't know if I would play it maybe more than that two player, but it's definitely one that I enjoyed at that two player count. It took about two, two and a half hours to play that. The next one was Ethnos. So Ethnos was a, a sort of set, oh, set collection game that Andrew had and he brought to game night. We played a four player game of that. I don't think the score was too close. I think Andrew won by quite a bit, but it's a game in which you have different sort of fantasy races and you're collecting sets of cards in different colors for different regions. And when you turn in, uh, cards you have to you want to turn you always have to turn in one more than the the previous set from that region and you have to turn in all cards from that region or all cards of of the same race so all the same color or all the same race and you can't mix and match the two which is a cool concept i enjoyed it it's not one that i'm rushing out to get a out of print copy of but i did enjoy the play Probably not my favorite set collection game, not my favorite area control game, but those two concepts worked pretty well together, I thought. Next one was another game of Andrew's. A lot of these were games that Andrew owned, because, yeah, trying to get as many of his games played and tried. Uh, so th this one was Forbidden Desert. So Forbidden Desert is a very simple cooperative game in the Forbidden Lines. There's the first one, which is Forbidden Island. There's Forbidden Desert. And then there's Forbidden uh, Sky and the brand new Forbidden Jungle that came out last year. So this one is Forbidden Desert. It's the second from the series. And so you are on, you're in a desert and you are trying to uh, get all of your ship parts to try and get away, fly away before uh, you get sucked into the, I guess the sand in the desert and you run out of water. So when you run out of water and you, you don't have all your parts, you lose. We played on the very simplest uh, way. I think uh, like the novice difficulty or beginner difficulty, one of the two. And I thought it was pretty easy for us. We played three player, I want to say, and we uh, beat the game pretty easily without problems, but not my favorite. I probably would, wouldn't would ever ask to play for the, play this game when Pandemic was an option to be played, but I, I would uh, try their other ones in the, trail, or in the, the four from the series if someone had them and wanted to play them. The next one was Mystery of the Abbey. So Mystery of the Abbey is one that I wanted for the longest time. I w almost backed up the new version on GameFound, but I ended up not doing so. But Mystery of the Abbey is a game in which you play, uh, it takes place in an abbey and you are trying to uh, solve the murder, like which uh, uh, member of the, uh, the abbey uh, killed this guy and you have you're going from room to room you are going to be finding pieces of information you're going to be trading cards amongst each other passing cards around you have your own player sheet that you're crossing off suspects deducing suspects whenever uh, you f find a card you cross uh, you see a particular character you cross that character off because you know that character couldn't possibly be the murderer 
and yeah so that was a fun game every time you're in a room with another player you're forced to ask a question and they can't and either answer that question or they can take a vow of silence but if they answer that question they get to ask you a question and you have to answer truthfully and you're forced to answer so that was one thing that i didn't really care for because i didn't exactly know what kind of questions to ask so i was trying to find keep stay away from everyone else so that way i didn't have to be forced to ask questions but there was another issue i thought well, there was one of my gamers they said that they've seen two of the three possible from one category already and i knew in my hand i had another one of those three so that i crossed off all three from that section and the murder ended up being one of those three and i knew i didn't trade hadn't tra it was the beginning of the game and i hadn't traded any cards with that particular person so that kind of ruined the game for me at least because i crossed off the person that ended up being the murderer because based on information I was told but I I don't know if that was a, a me problem misunderstanding the whole situation or if that was just a, a, a mistake that was made but yeah that was that's a game I would try again but yes you're very much reliant on everyone else telling the truth in this game because you're not allowed to lie but sometimes people make mistakes next one I played, I finally picked up a copy of QE, Quantitative Easing. It's one that's been talked about a lot on the Dice Tower, so I wanted to give it a try. We had a copy in the shop. Someone bought it before I was able to pick it up, and then I ordered a new copy and I purchased it. So Quantitative Easing, or QE, is a game in which players play as countries during the economic recession of 2008 and they're going to be bailing out corporations. And over the course of the game, you're trying to get the most amount of points possible and without spending the most amount of money. And uh, all the, the bids are silent bids where you write down on your your personal sh uh, uh, like uh, checkbook thing, you write down a bid and you pass it to the person, the start player that round and you uh, they are going to write down who the winner is and you never know how much was bid but it, so uh, so you're kind of trying to spend them uh, get the most amount of points without spending the most because by the end of the game if you had spent the most amount of money then you automatically lose the game very similar to one of my favorite games see if it's a, which is high society which is a similar concept except for with high society you have cards that tell you how much you can bid whereas with qe you have to bid uh, uh, you can bid whatever number you want. You can make up numbers because you're basically, your country is printing money. So it doesn't matter when you are just printing money. So money doesn't mean anything as long as you haven't spent the most amount of money. All right, so the next one I played was Terror in Meeple City or Rampage. So my copy I had was Rampage. I picked up a, a copy, a used copy, I want to say on eBay about a year and a half ago. Finally got it to the table. I enjoy these little uh, dexterity kids sort of games every once in a while. And I finally broke it out. We had a four player game of that in which you are trying to eat as many people as possible, going and destroying buildings, trying to eat as many people as possible to collect sets of different types of uh, people. So there's the blondes, there's like the military people, there's businessmen and such, and you're just trying to eat all different types of people, as many different types of people as you can. You're destroying all these skyscrapers and houses and the stadium and just knocking people out of buildings and then eating them. So you have your uh, vehicle you can throw into it, you can blow down a building, you can uh, drop your your character piece onto that building. You can flick your disc to uh, to move. So there's flicking aspects and there's and there's dropping aspects. So it's very much a dexterity game as well as some strategy to it as well. It's a cute concept. Terra and Meeple City or Sasha Rampage. I think. No longer in print, unfortunately. 
art. The next one I played was Twa, so fi which is a very dry Euro game, which you are rolling dice and you are going to be putting dice in se separate sections and whatever workers you have in each specific section are going to determine how many dice you're going to get to roll for that round and you can buy other people's dice from them and make sets and you are going to be conquering different areas which are s different mini games where you're going to be building the like cathedral I guess it's called and you're going to have these little cards that need to put a certain amount of dice on them and in which it'll help you play, place your cubes on there and you're trying to just get the most amount of points possible. It was a really close game when I played. Andrew, Jamie, and I played that, and I think Andrew beat me by a single point. So it was a very dry game, but it was a, a very mechanically sound game. It was a fun one for sure. That's Twa. And then the final one was Unmatched Brains and Brawn, which is the Marvel one, which has a Spider-Man, She-Hulk, and Doctor Strange, I think it was. I played as Doctor Strange, and then Jamie played as She-Hulk, and Eli played, I think it was Spider-Man. Yeah, Spider-Man. And so, it, normally I don't get to play three-player unmatched. Normally I also don't get to play like a full set with just the characters from that set. I usually mix and match, but this was my first time playing with that particular set and I hadn't mixed it in with the rest of my collection yet, so I played Brains and Brawn three-player, because we had three players because we were waiting for Andrew to show up. And how that game went was it, we ganged up on Eli, because it's never not funny ganging up on Eli, and he didn't draw the cards he needed, so he got eliminated pretty quickly, and then it was me and J Jamie chasing each other, and then we both were out of cards in the deck, and we were taking a bunch of damage until eventually I was able to corner Jamie and get the win. And, and then after that, I just combined the unmatched with all the rest of the, that set with all the rest of my unmatched sets. So, let's see. My favorite play of the month. Let's see, what was my favorite play? My favorite play, we're going to go with... We're going to go with Thrust Birmingham for my favorite play for this month. I enjoyed that. Not one I want to break out a lot in play, nor will I be able to because I don't own it, but I guess I could play on BGA. But not one I want to play a lot, but I enjoyed it and want to give it at least another try. My least favorite was probably Terra in Meeple City, just because there wasn't a whole ton of game there. There was a lot of luck in involved in a lot of like skill with the flicking which I'm not exactly the greatest at at which point I probably just play crokinole or ice cool at that point but it was a fun game and I'm not going to be getting rid of it by any means I'll just there's not one that's going to get broken out as much so that was are the games I played in March thank you everyone for watching have a great rest of your um uh, April have a good one bye